90% of people are learning English in the wrong way, and I think it's high time to change it. Hi, I'm Adam Carson here, and today I want to take a look at what I would do differently if I had mysteriously lost my ability to speak English and I had to learn it all over again. As you might know, I am not a native English speaker. I've never lived in an English speaking country, nor did I have any sort of you know, special upbringing. In fact, I started learning English when I went to school, like a lot of other people. And so, as you can probably guess, it took many, many years to get to this point. Indeed so. But looking back at my own English journey, I don't really think it had to. So, number one thing that I would change if I had to start all over again would be that I would start by just listening to English and I would try to imitate the sound of it. I wouldn't really worry about anything else at that point. I would just try to, you know, get the feel for it. Number two, start with learning pronunciation. That's what I would tell myself. Why? Well, you know, there are sounds in English that simply, well, don't exist in my own language, in my own mother tongue, and not knowing that meant that I was forced to substitute them as best as I could. But it's very, it happens very quickly that these little mistakes add up, they accumulate, and, you know, you easily end up with things like, you know, so-called Hinglish and Chinglish and Czechlish and so on. I would specifically start with the W and ER sounds because they're very, very common in English. Um, and the way to do them is that you imagine you want to kiss your mom or something and say W, W. So when we were winning. When we were winning, we wanted to wave. All right. Now, the other one that I've mentioned, the Er is very, very similar. You just lift up the tip of the tongue inside of your mouth, but you try not to touch anything. And everything else is the same. So, red, um, rascal, ran. Red rascal ran around the rock. And the third thing that I would start with would be uh, to also learn, you know, the TH sound. and. It's combos because it's super common in English and actually not very, uh, not very many other languages have it. Uh, about 7.5% of the world's languages have this th think things through. Think things through before you act. So that I think is super important and the other version of the TH sound uh, that's the one where you vibrate your vocal cords and make the th. Uh, can you hear the vibration? Hopefully, th. You can find it in words like this, the, or the, uh, other, and so on. This and the other problems are behind them. Yeah, that's what I would tell myself because I feel like I've spent all this time at school, you know, on grammar and vocabulary, so I could read and write, but. The talking part was just not really there. Uh, actually, I think it was only when I started to study Chinese that I fully realized this. Because Chinese is a tonal language, plus it has a lot of unfamiliar sounds as well. And if you get them wrong even just a little bit, well, I think people will have no idea what you're saying. And I've simply realized it's the same in English. So, let me summarize it for you. I don't think you should start with, you should start studying uh, any language, in fact, with grammar. You can think about children, right? First, uh, we teach them to make the right sounds. Later, we worry about grammar, vocabulary, syntax, and so on, so on and so forth. And that's why I would start with just listening to English and just mimicking what I'm hearing to get a real sense of it, to get a feel for it. Then I will learn pronunciation, starting with W and U, because it's almost, you know, the same face. W, U, right? When we were winning, Red Rascal ran out. 
And finally, I will learn the two versions of the TH sound, th and th. Think things through or the others get them. Now, I realize it's easier said than done because where can you go to practice English sounds, right? Um, well, I had the same question actually, which led me to create Accent Artisan. Now, Accent Artisan is a tool I wish I had when I was studying. Uh, it is designed to teach anyone to speak with American or British English accents in only three months. It's a fantastic challenge. So, you know, you get to work on pronunciation there, you get to work on emphasis, melody, vocabulary, and more. So I recommend you go to accentartisan.com, register, take on this three-month challenge if you're like me and you don't want to be seen as a stereotypical foreigner from, you know, X country forever and ever. Now, you get three days for free there, so, you know, what's there to lose? And also, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like it. If you loved it, don't forget to subscribe. And that will be all for today. Thank you so much for your attention and see you next time.